And now you're going to meet our creative team. Tell us who you are, gang. Hi, I'm Miriam Heads with IO Visuals, and I am one of the producers as well as the archival producer for Memory Builds the Monument. Hi, I'm Tan Williams with IO Visuals, and I am the archival producer. Hi, I'm Greg Carter. Uh, I'm producer and writer of the short. Hey, I'm Isaac Yeoman, the creative director at IO Visuals, and I am the director of Memory Builds the Monument. Hello, I'm Mel Chen. I'm a conceptual artist. Sometimes say I'm a recovering conceptual artist, and part of my association, I'm proud to be part of this whole production. And my life was infused as a young person with things coming from KYOK and KCOH. It's Skipper Lee, Carry a Mountain of Soul. That was the world I understood in terms of music. And I knew about uh, this place, this legendary place, through the customers they came to as a young man. So it's always been in within me. And so just being invited to come back to this, this place has been profound. My family is from Fifth Ward. Uh, my dad's uh, father and grandmother lived in Fifth Ward. My paternal grandmother actually had a small uh, juke joint is what they're called and um, and store in Fifth Ward. So I don't know a lot about them, but that's very interesting a p part of um, my family that I'm interested to learn now that I know more about Fifth Ward. Um, but a lot of um, a lot of my family members go to New Pleasant Grove Church. My parents met at that church. Um, my, I was baptized at that church. It's it's a lot. I've always liked uh, the culture of Fifth Ward and the structures, the buildings, everything was just so, it just felt so us. Um, I just I just always loved it out here and um, I guess it's, it just streams through my, butt, my bloodline. Fantastic, I love that. So we are all the fifth and um, Miriam, I did not know that much about your Fifth Ward connection, that's amazing. So <laughs> great to hear all of your Fifth Ward stories. Again, the mantra for our culture arts district is I am the fifth, with I, which I absolutely love. Um, and so now I wanna talk a little bit about you know, who we have making this film specifically, um, just to give people a sense of the powerhouse people that we brought together. And I know that um, a lot of times artists don't like talking about themselves. So we're gonna ask specifically Mel, Isaac, and Greg. So when Memory Builds the Monument is more than one thing. It would be, it's the urgency not only to make this film, it's the urgency to capture people, but to propel the imagination, to be a catalytic structure, to, to create those languages that have yet to be formed, to come out, that music that is yet to be born, that was born out of here. So I am, uh, um, like I say, I'm honored just to be part of a process. A lot of the memories had been destroyed Right. And then we're also in a state of um, a pandemic and uh, and we understood the not only the urgency, but also um, the care we had to take when interviewing the people who were giving us these memories. Right. Because they were, um, you know, more open to being able to, you know, unfortunately catch COVID. Um, and so uh, it was it was a challenge because Club Matinee started in the 40s. And um, unfortunately, the physical monument was uh, no longer there or was shut down rather in the, in the 70s. But um, there was Man, it's just it's so many stories. But if you went to that place, that popping spot during that time, you can just kind of do the math that you had to be you had to be elder. I'm gonna say it like that, right? And so um unfortunately a lot of those people aren't here to be able to tell those stories. So just out of just pure um you know, Tom, um, you know, we were only able to collect so many memories and then with a short, um, especially documentary style, you have to, you know, get multiple people telling the same story to be able to build um, what we call a segment, you know what I mean? Um, and so, yeah, it's just, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a puzzle. Mm -hmm. You just gotta, you know what I mean? Um, 
kind of put everything together and make it make sense. Just to acknowledge that, you know, we did make this film during a really, really trying time. I know that we wanted to interview Grady Gaines, um, who passed away um, during this time. And so uh, incredible loss. Yeah. Um, but really, that really marked the urgency. Right? right. We were like, this is why we have to figure out how to get this done. Right. Um, so just acknowledging that we did uh, make the film during that time and just to rest in peace to uh, Mr. Grady Gaines, who's incredible um, artist and Absolutely. wanted to get a chance to talk to him. Man. Hi, I'm Amanda Wiles. I'm the director of Source Studio. Uh, we are an artist-centered and action-oriented studio that works to engage community um, in creative collaboration. Uh, Source was founded by artist Mel Chin, uh, so we have our roots in North Carolina where Mel's studio is, but we work on projects all over the country. Uh, we work on big, bold, and poetic projects, um, especially around social and environmental issues. And so with this project, uh, we worked with Mel and our partners to really to realize Mel's initial vision, but then also uh, create space to bring people together and opportunities to realize new ideas and evolve, evolve the concept um, in ways that are going to be meaningful um, here in, in Houston and in Fifth Ward. Um, so with this team, we're really excited. We, I think we have a, a, a leader full team of artists and creatives. So we have some trivia questions for you. What you'll do is go to Memory Builds the Monument on Facebook or Instagram and type in your answer. The first to get the right answer win a prize. Question number one, who was the owner of Club Matinee? Question number two, what radio station broadcasted from Club Matinee? Finally, question number three, name one artist that played at Club Matinee. While you're there, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Memory Builds the Monument. Club Matinee, live music venue, you, you can't, we can't leave here without at least saying something about the music. So right. Isaac, anything you want to tell us about the music part of this? Man, the music piece was just so incredible. Um, again, as, you know, as a team, I think collectively, you know, we are younger at heart. Um, and definitely a majority of it younger at age when it came to the core crew. And man, I was just so educated by the music that was happening. You know what I mean? To know Sam Cooke started at Club Matinee in Fifth Ward, James Brown, Ray Charles, when I went to KCOH, I didn't even know in the Ray movie, uh, Ray Charles met his wife at Club Matinee. That's crazy, you know what I mean? Um, and he was at KCOH. Wow running his record with Skipper Lee, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so, I mean, Aretha Franklin, um, uh, B.B. King, Bobby Blue Bland. I mean, these songs that you remember hearing when on, on Saturday, mm -hmm. after your mama done cooked and it's time to clean up the house, <laughs> you heard these songs, right? right? You heard these songs as a youngster, but you didn't really put a connection. So to know we put a connection with a place and just what this whole project beyond the film represents is memory builds the monument. It's, it's the memories of people rebuilding a monument, not physically, but mentally, the energy, bringing the energy back to the community and, and allowing a, a, a picture of what our community could look like, what it can feel like, and just re-energizing the people. And then also um, allowing the people who were there during that time to express what their energy felt like. Because as a director, again, remember, like I said, the pictures weren't there. So it's like, in my mind, the only way I could see this was through their memories. The only way I could see the inside was through their memories. So that's why when I got the picture, I'm like, oh, we're in there, you know what I'm saying? But it, and so, I mean, man, they talked about how the music made them feel, right? Like mm -hmm. how important the music was. And it was a, it was a space of freedom. Like it was a place to go when you just wanted to let loose, you know what I mean? And um, and like Mel said, it was a hub, like the picture show. It was a hub. It was a place not just for music, but a space um, for people to gather around and, and be our best versions of ourselves. So, 
Man, I'm so excited for uh, everybody to see this film. And uh, man, memory builds the monument. Right. Hey, <laughs> to be continued. Well, we definitely did not want you to see the film tonight without knowing who was behind the film. As you know, a project of this magnitude has a lot of support. Hello, my name is Lindsay Gary, and I'm the oral history lead for the Memory Builds the Monument project. And I'm joined here with two amazing people. We have Miss Valerie Wade and Mr. Alvin Bird. And we're gonna be talking to you all a little bit about what we did with the oral history section of this entire project, which was amazing. So I wanna start off by having them introduce themselves. So we can start with maybe ladies first, Miss <laughs> Valerie Wade. Sure, well, first of all, thank you, Lindsay. It's an honor to be here and an honor to be involved with this project. Um, again, my name is Valerie Wade and uh, I am a local uh, archivist and public historian. Uh, my uh, consulting, I guess, firm or business is Linfield Historical Consulting, and I'm just really passionate about helping people uh, connect with history in practical ways, in engaging ways, and uh, I'm just, you know, really happy to be involved with this project and yes. helping to bring it to life behind the scenes. Yes. Thank you. Yes, and my name is Alvin Bird, and i uh, once again, as Valerie, thank you so much for doing this project, uh, excited about it, uh, born and raised in Fifth Ward, um, went to Crawford Elementary, right in the neighborhood, E.O. Smith Junior High School at that time before middle school, okay. <laughs> graduated from Phyllis Wheatley, uh, also was the first president of the Greater Fifth Ward Super Neighborhood Council. Um, Went to Texas Southern for a little while and joined the United States Navy, served 10 years, and uh, just a proud uh, uh, resident of Fifth Ward. You know, we wanted to walk by the matinee. See, I lived on the Lowndes and Jensen side, and the matinee was on the Lowndes and Greg side. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> we would go down, it would be a treat to go to the matinee, mm -hmm. you know, walk past it. and you know, watch the folks, the way they dressed. And see, Mr. Brown, he he had a a place called House of Brown. That's right. It's yeah. still here, too. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. It's over now on uh, Jensen and uh, Tidwell. Yes. But uh, that was the place where we would stand on one side of the street and watch the way the guys who <laughs> were dressed in the, in the <laughs> fine clothes and the beautiful cars and, you know, just, you know, we had a game called Zip. Uh-oh, what's that? I could zip that car and that car would be mine. My friend would beat me to the zip, and that car would be his. So after the end of the game, whoever had the most zips would have to buy the sodas. Oh. So, oh. And 